Hello and welcome to a new tutorial on Able Games Dev where I show you how to create cool stuff with the Unity 5 game engine. Okay, Today I'm going to show you how to do single jump and double jump and I want to thank one of our wonderful subscribers who had sent in this request. So let's get going. First let's go to the play mode by hitting the play button or command P and here's the familiar cat game character. Now let me hit the up arrow and the cat jumps and it's got a nice falling animation Here's the problem. If I continuously hit the up arrow, let's have a look what happens. Up, 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 up. Hey, what's going on here? If I continuously hit the up arrow key, well, where's the kitty? There. Well, let me do this again. Up, 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 up and away. Well, the kitty starts to think that it's Superman or something like that and boom, it just came back on, right? So. I think this is not good for your mobile platformer. So I'll show you how to do a single jump and a double jump. So let me enable a functionality and I'll show you exactly how this is going to look like. Alrighty, I have made some changes and now let's have a look what happens. I'm hitting the up arrow key and that's once. The kitty jumps and falls down. Nice and tidy. Two times. And the kitty jumps and then makes another jump and falls down. Jump, 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 jump. Nopes. The kitty just did a single jump and a double jump. Okay, let's try this one more time. That's it. One and two. One and two. Okay, one, two. That's it. Okay, so this is the single jump and double jump. And uh, thank you for the request. One of our wonderful channel subscribers has sent in this request. So here it is. Let's get started. Let's exit the play mode and let's get coding. Alrighty, let's start by looking in the hierarchy panel. And let's highlight your CAD game object. And in the inspector panel, please confirm that you have a player manager script. Now double click this player manager. It's going to open in mono develop. Okay. Now, we'll be using two Boolean variables. One for checking if the player is standing on the ground, and we'll call it is grounded. And the second one to enable double jump, and we'll call it can double jump. Let's begin by declaring the is grounded Boolean variable. Let's begin by declaring is grounded, like so. Now let's head on to on collision enter 2D and we're going to set is grounded to true. Okay, now this piece of code here is going to check if the player collides with the ground, we're going to set is grounded to true. Now since the player has a rigid body 2D and the forces of gravity are working on the player, the player is going to collide with the ground and this piece of code will be executed and in the beginning of the game, is grounded will be true. Okay, and what we want to do is when is grounded is true, we're going to allow the player to jump. Let's see how we can do that. Let's head on to the jump method, and you see these three lines of code. We're going to do a command X, and let's put in an if condition. If is grounded, in that case, we're going to put this block of code here and set is grounded to false which means the second time you try to jump since is grounded is false no jumping will happen this piece of code will not be executed okay so let's try and see if this is working let's go to the play mode and there's the cat now first I want to show you the mobile control okay this a button is the jump control so let's hit the a one time two times yes it's the Okay, so the single jump is working now, but here's a problem. If I press the up arrow, like so, whoops, oops, oops, the cat is still under the impression that it's like Superman. Okay, what's going on here? Okay, let's exit the play mode and let's get back to the code. At this point, I want to show you an important thing. Let's have a close look. If you notice in the update method, right where you have written the jumping code this piece of code is not checking if the player is grounded okay 
So we can do two things. We can just put an if condition, if is grounded, and put all of this code inside the if condition. But, you know, that's duplication of code, right? So I want to introduce, especially the beginners, to programming. An important and useful concept. Anytime you have duplicate code, try to put it inside a method, okay? And then you can call the method. So this exact same code, have a look, these three lines are here, okay? So we need to remove the duplicate. What we can do in that case is we're going to delete this and just write jump, okay? And this is a method invocation or in simple terms, a call to a method. You're simply calling a method called jump. And here, you want to check if the player is grounded, okay? So the player is only going to jump if the player is grounded and the player presses the up arrow key. Okay, let's see if this works. Let's go back to the play mode and the player is grounded. Let's hit the up arrow. That's it. I'm pressing the up arrow multiple times, but this is single jump in action for you. Okay, so our first mission is complete. We've done the single jump. Now let's head over to double jump. For double jump, the same way we're going to declare can double jump and let's copy this from here and we're going to go to on collision enter and here let's initialize it to false okay anytime the player is standing on the ground you don't want the player to do a double jump right so that's the reason we're doing this now you may ask when is the player going to do the double jump okay so let's go to the jump and here we have this if is grounded block of code Okay. Now, when the player's standing on the ground, you don't want to do the double jump. You want to do the double jump when the player has already jumped. Okay. So let's write if can double jump. We're going to put in some code here. And what code? We're going to bring these two lines of code and paste them here. So what we're saying is if the player can double jump, let the player jump. Show the jumping animation. Okay. And an important thing, set can double jump to false. Okay, so what this means is this will happen only if can double jump is true. Okay, the first condition. Now, you may be asking me, if player is grounded, the player is going to jump, that's fine. If can double jump, this is going to happen, that's fine. But hey, when are we actually activating or turning this guy to true can double jump okay that's a great question and you can easily accomplish this using a method called invoke okay this invoke belongs to mono behavior and another useful thing when you're programming you start coding mono behavior gives you these little helpful pointers from time to time so it's good practice you can get to know what this method takes in uh, there are two parameters, string and a float parameter, and the summary tells us that invoke invokes the method, method name, in time seconds. So it's kind of using a delay before calling a certain method. So let's specify a method. Let's call it enable double jump. Okay. And let's specify a variable. Let's call it delay before double jump jump okay now another thing when you program and you have these descriptive variable names and you're working in teams it's really a good idea because anyone looking at this variable will know that this variable will definitely store something related to a delay before double jump right so it's good practice to create descriptive names don't be scared of creating long variable names especially in teams or even for yourself okay Code readability is improved a lot with this practice, but like I say, hey, feel free to explore your own coding conventions. The job is to make coding simple and fun activity for you. Okay, now you see this guy is red because we haven't declared it. So let's first go ahead here and we're going to specify a public variable. Let's paste it here. Okay, and you may be wondering what type it is. It's going to be a float. Okay. It's going to be a time, so time is always in float. Okay, let's head back to the jump. Let's copy this guy, enable, and 
outside the jump method. Let's create another method. Let's call it enable double jump. And in here, we're going to set can double jump true. That's it. So what happens now? The logic is when the jump method is called, okay, first, the compiler is going to see if the player is grounded. If the player is grounded, all of these statements will be executed. And then this invoke will call the enable double jump and with this delay. Okay, so you're going to specify a delay. Okay, and after this brief delay, invoke method is going to call enable double jump. And what is enable double jump? It's right here. And all it's going to do is set can double jump to true. Okay, now I also want to show you something because these nested codings can become complex if you if you sort of overlook the flow of how it's taking place. I want to make sure that you understand that this jump method is the method that's attached to the jump button game object inside your uh, scene. So let me show you. Here's the Unity editor and this is your scene. Okay, under the mobile UI you have your button jump. Okay, this guy here. And when you look inside the inspector panel, when you have the on click block, notice that you have the player manager dot jump. Okay, the moment the player clicks this button, the player manager dot jump method is going to be called. Okay, and what is the player manager dot jump? First of all, what is player manager? Player manager is this script here, this guy that you're working on. And this script has a public method called jump. Okay, so it's the same jump method that you see here. Okay, it's attached to this jump game object, your mobile UI button. Now, once you understand that, you can figure out that anytime you press that jump button, this jump method is going to be called. Okay, now, why is it important? It's important because this jump method has two if blocks. The first one and the second one. Now let's begin by labeling or putting in a comment. This guy or this particular block will handle your single jump. Okay. And this guy will do the double jump for you. Now you know that this jump method has two if blocks. The first one is going to handle your single jump and the second one for your double jump. Okay. Now. When the game begins, the first time the player will be grounded. Why is that so? Why will the player be grounded? That, that can be a valid question. And the reason is when the player hits the ground. If you notice, let's go to the on collision enter 2D. This on collision enter 2D will be called only if the player hits the ground. And you may ask, but why is a on collision enter 2D called? That is because the player has a rigid body 2D component attached to it. Okay. And that's why when it hits the ground, a collision happens. And since this is a 2D game, the collision will be of type on collision enter 2D. Okay. So when this collision happens, a variable, which I have named other, which is of type collision 2D is available. And we're going to check here in this if block, what is the tag of the game object associated with this variable. And we're going to check if the tag is equal to ground, we're setting is grounded to true. Okay, so remember, when your game begins, the player will collide with the ground, this on collision enter 2D will be called, and using this if block, you're going to check if the player is colliding with the ground, and if it's colliding with the ground, you're going to set is grounded to be true. Okay, and at this point, you're going to set can double jump to false. Why are you doing this? Because when the player is standing on the ground, you don't want the player to do a double jump, right? The player will double jump when it's already jumping. Okay, that's the mechanics of double jump. The player jumps and when in the air, you have the ability or the player has the ability to do a double jump. So on the ground, no double jump. That's why can double jump is false. So with this understanding, let's go back to the jump method here. So I hope you understand that when the jump method is called, the first if block is going to check whether the player is grounded. 
you'll set the jumping boolean variable to true you'll set is grounded to false because right in the next statement you're going to make the player jump using this piece of code okay rb.addForce and you're going to pass in a new vector 2 and this is the jump speed in the vertical direction the player is going to jump the moment the player jumps you're going to set the jumping animation and now remember I told you the mechanics of double jump is when a player is already in the air is airborne only then double jump should be available and that's what this invoke is doing for you this invoke is going to call enable double jump okay it's self descriptive enable double jump activate double jump okay I want double jump but after a certain delay so you're gonna you're gonna be able to pass in a certain delay which will be a float because time in unity or in C sharp is measured in float float is a data type and once you do that, invoke is going to enable your double jump. So this guy, this, this, this string parameter, enable double jump is a method name. Where is this method? It's right here. This, void enable double jump. So once this method is called, this method will execute this particular line of code, which is can double jump equals true. And the moment can double jump equals true, what happens is when you press the jump button again, this piece of code can be executed because for this to get executed can double jump should be true okay and since enable double jump set this value to true now this guy can be executed so your double jump will work now okay now but what happens is if this guy is true the compiler says okay let's say okay let's see what code we have so we have set can double jump equals false okay so you don't want to continuously do the double jump okay that's going to send the cat right to the moon you don't want to do that so only one double jump and then set can double jump to false so if the player continues to press the jump button it's not going to work okay it's going to work only one time alrighty so once we understand how the double jump mechanics is going to work there's just one last step before we can go ahead and test it and for that step we need to get to the update block where you have the jumping code here if you notice you have the single jumping player code but what about the double jumping so we're going to copy this and we're going to paste it here say double jump in the comments and instead of is grounded this will be can double jump okay and that's about it we can quickly go ahead and test this whole thing in the play mode now. Here's the CAD game player. Okay, I'm hitting the up arrow one time. And we have a single jump. Perfect. How about two times? One and two. And there, we have a double jump. One and two. And there's a double jump. Let's try running. And there's a double jump. Okay, let's try running. Single and double. That's cool. So it looks like the double jump is working, but if you notice, there's a slight bug. And that bug is actually a small feature that we can turn off. If you notice, when the cat is jumping down, it's, it's actually executing the falling animation multiple times because the falling animation is again set to a looping mode and we can quickly fix that. Let's exit the play mode. Let's get down to the animator. And you notice this box falling double click this box and in the inspector panel you'll see this property loop time and if there's a check mark uncheck this save your project let's get back to the play mode and now the cat is doing a double jump but it's not doing the falling animation many times okay so this looks about okay alrighty so I encourage you to try different settings for the cat gravity and uh, the gravity scale the jump speed and stuff like that and try to figure out your own uh, your own version of the mobile platformer my effort was to show you the basic mechanics of creating a mobile platformer and I thank you for joining me during this tutorial please feel free to like subscribe or comment to my videos and also suggest any ideas and I'll try to see what best I can do okay my name is Abel and thank you once again I wish you all very happy game programming